Well, welcome, welcome everyone. everyone. Uh, thank uh, you, thank so you so much for joining, joining us. us. Turn this down. If I turn this down, will it turn the sound back up? So if I turn that completely off. I'm not sure. I'm still echoing somewhere. I don't know where it is. Um, hope you can't hear the echo. We're having some technical difficulties over here, but it seems to be going well. Thank you so much for joining us. This is our second cook along. We've got our very own Chef Rob of the cafe joining us today. Um, you're going to be making some Argentinian flank steak with chimichurri sauce and some street corn. South American street corn. South American street corn. So, so we'd love for you to turn your cameras on. Um, it won't be on the recording. We'll just be recording our uh, speaker view, but we'd love to see what you're working on. And if you have questions, you can always show us what you're doing. So with that, I will hand it over to Rob. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to those who uh, joined us for our first, first cook along, our chicken pot pie. Um, and we had such a good turnout for it that we wanted to do it again. Uh, and what a perfect time to do a cooking show in the summer and do some barbecue recipes. So um, if any of you uh, haven't had flank steak before, it is a wonderful cut of meat. It's a little bit expensive, not too expensive, but it's well worth the price that you might pay for it. Uh, and the flavor that we will infuse into the steak is going to be outstanding. It will be one of your favorite recipes uh, to add to your cookbook. And then along with that, uh, we're going to make a chimichurri sauce, which is a wonderful sauce to accompany any type of meat, but the South American sauce, it complements all of the seasonings that we um, add to the uh, marinade. And then uh, we'll have a side dish, a South American uh, street corn. And I think everyone kind of has an idea what street corn is. A lot of times you might see it as a whole ear of uh, corn that's dunked in mayonnaise, and then it's sprinkled with uh, Mexican spices. And this is basically the same thing, but um, it's not as messy because we take the corn off and we'll put it into a bowl and mix it all up. And it's like, wow, it's really good. So I hope everyone was able to find all the ingredients um, at the grocery store and get your meat and uh, we can get going. So uh, last time I, I just went over a couple quick uh, safety tips. So I just wanted to do that again very quickly. Um, as you know, I'm not wearing any gloves, but uh, for those of you who do come to the cafe, we always wear gloves while we cook. Um, but for this demonstration, I'm not going to be wearing gloves, but we always do wear gloves. Um, and uh, we also have our cutting board out here, so everyone has a cutting board. That's great. But for those of you who may not, I have a damp cloth underneath my cutting board, and you could have a, a damp cloth or maybe some uh, a damp paper towels. Uh, just get them wet, bring them out, get them a little damp, and then you put your cutting board on top of it because what this will do, it'll help it secure it down. <clears throat> if you didn't have that, uh, the board might slide around if you're chopping and that might, <clears throat> might, you know, might cut yourself. So I think we don't want that to happen. Also, uh, with your knives, uh, when we cut, um, I would ask everyone to you know, hold an, a chef's knife in the proper way. Um, holding a knife with your index finger on top of the knife when you cut is not a really proper way to do it because you don't have a lot of balance and your knife is kind of wobbly. So if you're cutting, you could accidentally have the knife go into your hand. And you don't really want to hold it like a club either because well, this way it's not, not too easy to cut. What you really want to do is you want to take your thumb right hand and if you're left hand it's the opposite way and you just put it on the right at the point of where the handle and the blade meet and then you take your index finger and you kind of wrap it around here so it's nice and snug so now you have a lot of nice control over your knife and so when you're cutting it's not going to go back and forth also when you cut um you have to remember to keep your fingers your thumb behind your fingers a lot of people cut with their thumb out like this. And what happens is you will, you'll cut the tip of your finger off. So you always take your thumb and you put it behind your fingers and you use your knuckles as a guide to cut. So when we're chopping, it's like this. And my thumb is behind, my tips of my fingers are behind. And I'm just using my knuckles as my guide as I cut. So that'll come, uh, you'll see that a little bit more examples once we do this. So for the first thing, let's work on our uh, flank steak is our first recipe. Then we're going to go on to the uh, Mexican street corn, and then we'll do the chimichurri. So the first part for the, uh, for the flank 
steak is we want to uh, toast our uh, our seeds. And we have uh, coriander, uh, fennel, and black peppercorns. And you know, it doesn't matter what brand you use, they're all the same. So these are kinds that I have. And uh, you have a saucepan. And we are going to use uh, one tablespoon of fennel. Now, you know, again, this is kind of like a roadmap. If, if you like fennel, the taste of fennel, add some more. If you don't like fennel, you know, you don't have to add it. But uh, it all goes together really well. So we're going to do one tablespoon of fennel into the dry saucepan. We're going to add one uh, tablespoon of coriander into the dry saucepan. And then we're going to add one black, uh, one uh, uh, tablespoon of black peppercorns into the saucepan. And add that up, mix it up. Now I have my uh, stove, our stove for the cafe over here. This is, this is what we cook on for anyone who wonders how we make our food. This is the thing, believe it or not. So I got some water boiling over here. So we're just going to put our uh, dry uh, spices in here and we're just going to let them toast up for a little bit. And you're just going to toast them until you can start to smell them. And uh, believe me, the, the entire house will start to be very aromatic with the fennel, the coriander. You'll really start to, uh, you'll, you'll smell it. So let that go for a little bit. Now, the, uh, the next step, and we'll get back to the uh, uh, seeds in a minute. We're going to uh, get together our um, olive oil and vinegar. So if everyone uh, can get a small bowl and then get your olive oil is the next. And we're gonna use three quarters of a cup of olive oil. So you pour three quarters of a cup of olive oil Into your thing, just take a little bit too slow, bubbly for me. Take the top off. So while I've got your attention, Rob, yeah. how often should you sharpen your knives? Oh, great question, Amy. My recommendation is you should sharpen your knife every time you use it. And you could use a steel. If anyone doesn't know what that is, I got one in the back kitchen. I can go run and get it. But it's a long um, piece of steel, basically, and it's kind of ridgy. And you want to just kind of hone your knife every time. So just hang on one quick second, right? I'll run back here real quick. Yeah, well, hang on. Looks like everybody's preparing. Let's see olive oil being poured. I just want to mention while we've uh, while we're waiting for Rob to come back, he's back now. Um, if you do have questions, I've got you on a mute right now because uh, cooking is noisy, and I want to make sure that you can hear Rob as much as possible. But if you do have questions, just type them into the chat or raise your hand, and I can unmute you from there. So this is what a steel is. It's it's a piece of steel, and this is if you feel it, it's kind of ridgy, and then it has this uh, piece sticking out right here, which is a hand guard, and you, you really should uh, hone your knife before every use. And uh, there's two ways to do it. You can hold it up and you strike down, you know, one side at a time. And so this is here in case you would come down too hard, it would hit that and it wouldn't cut off your finger. Or you could put the uh, steel down this way and you can, you know, strike downward and then you don't have to worry about your hands so much. So, you know, you should do that every time. Um, but then you should give your knives a, a real strong sh uh, sharpen, um, you know, maybe once a month, depending on how much you use them. And you can buy electronic or electric uh, sharpeners. I have one at home and it, you just run the blades through and it's like brand new. So it's really nice. So I don't know uh, if everyone here in the uh, audience uh, can smell the uh, spices, but they are very fragrant right now. And actually, you can, there's a little bit of smoke coming off it. So I'm going to take them off the heat right now. And we're just going to let them sit and um, cool for a bit. while we finish our uh, other part of the marinade. So we have our olive oil in here. Now we're gonna add some uh, red wine vinegar. We have three quarters cup of red wine vinegar. And again, any brand of uh, uh, red wine vinegar you wanna use, this is um, Orlando 
aged red wine vinegar. So this vinegar is going to add um, some real nice acidity uh, to, to the marinade. Uh, a lot of flavor. Uh, the olive oil is going to uh, help soften it. So we have our uh, olive oil and uh, vinegar in here. And then we're going to add some um, garlic. So I have uh, three cloves of garlic that I've already peeled. Um, and you can, you can use a head of garlic and peel it off, or you can just buy garlic already uh, peeled like this. One thing you do want to do is you want to get the tip off, this little knobby part. So you just, just cut, cut the tips off if you, ha if you have it, this little hard part. And you can just throw those away. And then what you want to do is you want to smash the garlic. You want to chop it. So the way you smash it, you just put the garlic down and you put your, uh, the blade of the knife on the garlic and you just give it a whack and there it's smashed. And so you just do it to all three like that. And then you can just pick it up you know, and put it into the uh, uh, mixture here. And then we wanted to also add um, a little bit of salt, uh, one teaspoon of uh, kosher salt. I just have some um, ground here, so you could just you know, eye it up as much as you want. It's just to add a little bit of salt right now. You, we will actually salt and pepper the steak, or you will, tomorrow before you throw it on the grill a little bit. Okay, let's go back to our spices. So they're kind of cool a little bit, very fragrant. Now, um, I don't know if anybody has a mortar and pestle. Uh, here's mine. I got this one when I went on a, it was called the uh, pork crawl. Uh, it was put on, put on by the uh, uh, pork board and uh, they flew a bunch of our food writers out to Puerto Rico uh, for a week. And uh, we just kind of drove around the island uh, by a host chef, uh, Jose Enrique. And uh, we ate pork like at all these different restaurants for an entire week. It was just ridiculous. It was so fun. <clears throat> that was a good trip. So you, if you, if you don't have a mortar and pestle, my recommendation would be to, um, you could put it into a bowl, you know, any, any type of bowl. Um, or if you have, you have a food processor, you could put it in here as well. But what you wanna do is you wanna just put the spices into the mortar and pestle, okay? You know, Rob, when I did this, uh, one of the perks of working here is you get to test the recipes ahead of time. So I had a girl's trip and it was like one step up from camping. We had a cabin, you know, kind of on the beach um, and we forgot to bring a mortar and pestle. pestle. Okay. And so we just threw the, the whole peppercorns, the whole thing in with the steak because we didn't really have another way to grind them up. Right, right, right. Uh, and it worked really well. You could do that too. Yeah, uh, that's right. You don't even have to crush them. Um, Toasting them really brings out and kind of blooms them. So yeah, if, if you don't even have anything, you just throw them in whole. That'll be, that'll be fine. So what we're going to do is here, we're just going to crush them up a little bit. And the crushing will, this just will bring out a little bit more flavor, make them a little bit stronger, mixes them up a little bit. It also will, um, when they're in the marinade, because they'll be with the steak and a lot of this will stick to the steak when you cook it. Uh, you won't get like a whole peppercorn. Uh, you might like that. Some people won't. It'd be a little bit too peppery or too big a piece of fennel or the coriander. So this just kind of grinds it up a little bit. And then it's, I mean, it's like, wow, it's, it's really, really good. So, you know, I don't know if everybody can see that, but it's nice and, you know, it's just ground up a little bit. So then you want, what you want to do is you just want to pour the ground spice mixture into the bowl with the olive oil, vinegar, and garlic. And then if you have a whisk or a spoon or a knife or fork, whatever, you know, just give it a little bit of a, a whirl. You can mix it up a little bit like that. So now we're going to move on to the flank steak, which I love flank. I, everybody knows where, what a, the flank steak comes from on the cow. You know, it's from the belly. It's the flank. So it's, it's a really, um, it is a kind of a muscular meat, but uh, that's okay. It, because it's a very flavorful cut of meat. So I got um, my meat. And uh, this time 
Um, I got mine from Pete's, but uh, my favorite meat market uh, is Wheaton Meat Market, which is on, I don't know what street that's on. I think it's like Main Street. Hale? I might be Main Street. Main yeah. Street. It's like the south side of the tracks. They just kind of remodeled and really, really good butcher shop. I mean, oh, whatever nice. you want. I mean, they have it. Uh, they'll cut things for you, whatever it is. They have it all. So here's your flank steak. And this one's pretty clean. Um, it's not too much fat on it. But, you know, sometimes you get flank steak and they'll, it'll be like fat, like a huge piece of fat on it. You kind of want to cut that off. So, you know, like this has a little bit here. So I just show you like, you know, you could just kind of, you know, you just, you just cut it off a little bit like that. Now, if you look at a flank steak, you can see how the grain goes. All this grain is running this way on both sides. And um, what we want to do is we're going to make some cuts on this uh, to open it up and have the marinade really, really penetrate into it. Also, uh, tomorrow, uh, when you guys um, grill and then cook it, you want to make sure you cut against the grain on the bias. So like this, this flank steak, the, the grain is going this way. So I wouldn't want to cut with the grain because it'll be really, be, it'll be inedible basically it's gonna be really really chewy so you want to cut across the grain so my grain is going this way so i want to cut this way if that makes sense so what we do with the steak here now is we want to um cut it and we're going to cut it in a fashion that's going to look like a checkerboard so you just take your knife and you just make some slits on it and if you have a really sharp knife it really shouldn't be that hard um to cut through it and you're just going through a little bit you're not cutting all the way through i mean this is like uh you know an eighth an eighth of an inch maybe not too much maybe a quarter of an inch so you cut all the way through through the whole thing and then you just want to cut the other way as well so you're making your slits so it's almost like a checkerboard yeah yeah i mean it looks like this and then what you want to do is you want to flip it over. You want to do the other side. So you just, just cut the whole thing. And then you just cut it the other way. Rob, I can really smell those spices. Isn't it strong? Yeah. Up. Yeah. It smells really good in here. There. How'd everybody do? I'm seeing thumbs up. Awesome. Somebody wrote in and said wheat and meat market also sharpens knives. So. Oh, oh, yes, you yes. Know. You know, there's also this guy in, in Glen Ellen. I think his name's Tony. Uh, he's a lot of a lot of times he's on the uh, um, north side of town. He's this, I think he's an old Italian man. And he drives around during the summer on a knife sharpening cart, a huge stone wheel. And he'll run down the streets and ring his bell and you bring out your knives or whatever, your scissors, and he'll sharpen them in front of your house. I don't know how much he charges, but it's this little old man on a pedal bike. It's really cute. Sounds like something from a book. Yeah, it, yeah, it's really, he's really cool. There's, actually, because on Facebook, people see him and then they post it and they're like, hey, Tony's coming. Uh, he's over on Hillside right now. So everybody's getting ready for him. Okay, so has everybody got done with their, uh, their meat? I'm seeing lots of working people. Okay. Is everybody caught up? We need a little bit more time. I think we're ready to move on. Okay. So now we're going to um, combine the steak and the marinade and a couple of um, additional ingredients. So this is just a regular Ziploc bag, a nice um, gallon bag is what you'll need. You wanna open it up. You just wanna take your steak. You wanna put it in. It's gonna double over because I mean, it's, it's a large piece. I'm gonna take your marinade. And you just pour it into the bag carefully. Now you want to hang on to the bag because if you don't, it'll just spill. You just pour it in. 
Okay. They have it like that. Now there's a couple uh, additional ingredients we want to add to this. We have our, uh, let's see, where'd it go? Oh, here it is. We have some rosemary. Now, if you don't have fresh rosemary, you could use dried rosemary. It's just, you know, it's whatever you have. Uh, so it's like one sprig of rosemary. This is some fresh rosemary. If you want to, you can kind of, you know, rough it up a little bit to open it up. You throw that in. Uh, it's one bay leaf. This, you use dried bay leaf, not a, not a fresh one. Just use dried. And then um, a hot pepper. Uh, these are hot peppers for my garden. I have like bags of these things. And it's just a combination. Like this is, um, uh, what is this one? This is just a, a Serrano. Uh, here's, here's like a ghost pepper, all different levels of heat. Uh, here's a Thai. A chai, this is this one's hot, not as hot as the uh, ghost. Or actually, I think this is a habanero. I don't have a goat. Yeah, these are habaneros. So you know, depending on how spicy you want to get it uh, to infuse some meat into uh, into the meat, you know, you you do what you want. So I'm going to go with a tie this time. And what I like to do is I like to break it up and into a couple of pieces, and you just throw the whole thing in there. And if you know if you have a garden at home, you know you just dry these things out. You just put them into a jar and keep it open, and they just eventually will dry out. And they're they're really cool. You could use them for whatever, anything you want. Soups, really really good. Okay, so we added all of our ingredients. Now you want to close the bag. Now, Rob, when I made this, it, it wasn't clear to me to get a dried pepper. So we just oh, uh, used a fresh pepper and we kind yeah. of cut it in quarters and put it in there. Yeah. Again, yeah, you could do that. You know, again, you know, this isn't baking. You know, baking is a lot different than cooking, uh, you know, uh, savory foods. You know, you could detour from the recipes. Yeah. If you wanted to use a, a, a fresh pepper, you could do it. If you don't want to include a pepper, you don't have to. Um, again, this is just a roadmap as to what you want to do. If you actually wanted to, you know, you could add different ing ingredients to this if you wanted to. I mean, like for the uh, uh, aged red vine wine vinegar, if, if you wanted to add a balsamic instead, something a little bit richer and deeper, uh, you know, that's all. That's fine. Um, you know, if, if say you wanted to make this kind of Asian-ish, um, you know, instead of using olive oil, you could use a peanut oil maybe and, and infuse some peanut flavors to it. Um, and then you can change the entire uh, sort of uh, ingredients you want in there. You could use like lemongrass for Asian. Um, you could use, you know, Thai, Thai chili peppers for that. Um, so, you know, it's all, it's all open for whatever you want to do. So now you have your steak in here. You just want to give it a kind of a, a good massage, massage it up, get everything in there. And then you want to uh, put it in a bowl or a pan, just in case the bag has a leak and you don't want this dripping on your, in your fridge. And you just put it, you just put it in here. And then you put it into the uh, refrigerator. Uh, always put your meat on the bottom shelf of your fridge. Don't put it up on the top shelf, just in case something would drip. You don't want it to be dripping on any fresh vegetables or fruits, you know, it's raw meat, you don't want that. And uh, so you let this sit in the fridge for 12 to 24 hours. And if you have the opportunity, you know, maybe within six hours, come in, give it a massage, turn it over another six hours or so, you can do that. If you wanted to grill this the same day, you could do that. Just um, let it sit out at room temperature. You know, this will be fine to sit out for like three hours. It, you're not going to make it go bad or anything like that. And after three hours being at room temperature, the flavors would be like a, an accelerated marination. Um, and then you'd be good to go to grill it. So for the grilling step, when you guys do this tomorrow, um, you know, you could do it on a gas grill or a charcoal grill, whatever you have, um, you could do it if you, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend doing it in the house on the broiler. It's just so much oil. You're gonna create a lot of smoke and it could be a, a fire hazard. So uh, start your fire, get it nice and hot, 
what you do is then you um, you take the steak out of, out of the bag. You remove the uh, pepper, um, the rosemary, and the bay leaf. Uh, you can leave the garlic on there if you want. If you don't, you know, you don't have to. But I mean, if you can see at your own steaks on how all the um, spices are just like all over it now. So you once you take it out of the bag. Uh, and you put it on another clean board, you uh, salt and pepper it. Again, you know, you salt and pepper the whole thing on one side. And then after your grill is ready, you put it on the grill to cook it. And then the salt and pepper side down, and then you salt and pepper the top side. And my recommendation is, um, you know, it depends on how you like to eat meat. And this is, this is how I go about determining uh, doneness for meat. So you take your palm of your hand, and if you touch your, your, this muscle right here, if you push that, this is what raw would be like. And if you take your first finger and you go like this, you don't, not really tight, just, just gently, this would be uh, rare. And then if you go this, this would be um, like medium rare. And then if you go like this, this would be like uh, medium well. And then if you went this way, this is well. So you can see every time you do this, it gets a little bit harder. With this steak, um, you really want this to be medium rare in the middle. The outer sides will be more toward like medium to medium well, which is, I think the steak is perfect for people who like, you know, if you got a family that likes, oh, I like mine more on the medium rare side. I like more mine more on the well side. Well, the outsides are gonna be well, more toward the well side and the inner parts Will be more toward the medium rare so it's like you come on in it's like a, almost like prime rib you know it's a really nice gradation so it's perfect but my recommendation is to cook about 10 to 12 minutes on one side and then flip it and then seven to ten on the next on the other side and seriously that's it you're done the steak is going to get really caramelized it's going to look really good um this ends might be a little burnt but you know that's that's pretty tasty too you take it off the grill put it on a clean plate let it sit for about 10 minutes. You want the, the meat to kind of rest and everything kind of draw back in. And you can um, uh, sprinkle a little salt on it, a little additional salt and pepper, and uh, just a couple of knobs of butter. Yes. So we have a question. Okay. Aisha is wondering if you can put this in the oven. Uh, no, because you'd be baking it at that time. And that, that would, um, it would take a longer time to bake and it would probably would, uh, uh, it could dry it out because it would, uh, it would, it would kind of cook, I guess it would cook more consistently throughout. So could you put it in like a grill pan on your stove top? Oh, uh, no, I wouldn't do that. Gotta be on a grill. Because that's, that's like direct flame. So it would burn right away. Because the grill, you have a little bit of separation and all you're doing is getting the radiating heat off the, off the charcoal. Um, yeah, if you put it like, in a, in a, like if I put this like right on the stove top, it would burn right away because that's a direct flame. Um, because, and then if you just put it in the oven, you're roasting it then. I mean, I don't know, I, that, you could try that. I love, you know, if you want to do that, let me know how it turns out. I've never, I've never attempted that. that. That could be something that could be done. Um, I don't know how long the time, you, you, well, again, you, you could put a meat thermometer in there and in the center and when that would probably hit like one, uh, for this steak, I would say like, like 140, 145, then I'd pull it out because the ends would be, you know, probably like 10 degrees hotter. So I mean, that's a possibility. So whenever I grill something, I'm a big griller, but I don't have a grill at home. So I always have to reinvent the wheel from scratch whenever I grill on vacation or whatever. Um, I always go to Weber.com to get their grilling recommendations. Yeah, that's a great resource. Yeah, I sure. like it because they they will say, here's the type of grill. Here's how you want to cook it, how long, how to heat your grill, everything like that. So when I was on the girls trip, we only had a charcoal grill. And usually I cook with gas when I do have a grill. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I've never cooked with a charcoal grill before. But it was super easy. Right. Yeah, every grill is different. You know, and, and the, it depends on the size of the grill. Um, you know, how much charcoal you put on the cooking surface, um, you know, they have those eggs, those green eggs. I mean, those things cook entirely different. They're a lot faster. Um, yeah. So it's, 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 
every cooking, uh, everyone who does the cooking will might find it a little bit different. So, you know, again, these are guidelines. Um, you know, you have to kind of test it yourself. So make it, make it this time, keep some notes as how you did it and what you might want to change. I want to decrease the cooking time. I want to increase the cooking time. I want to increase the heat. I want to lower the heat, so forth like that. So could you repeat your recommendations one more time and I'll put them in the chat? Sure. If this is on a, uh, uh, either a charcoal or gas, I would recommend um, after you take it out of the bag and you salt and pepper one side, put it on the grill, salt, pepper side down for like 10 to 12 minutes. And then you want to flip the steak over because when you put it on the first time with salt and pepper side down, you're going to salt and pepper the top side. So you're going to flip it over and cook like another seven to 10 minutes. So it's, it's always a little bit less on the second split on, on the flip. And when, when you flip it, that's when you can kind of do the tape, the test of the meat, you know, Oh, is it, it's, it's still kind of rare. It's, it's, you know, raw, it's raw or it's rare. So this is when, when you're, when you flip it, and you're cooking it for about seven minutes, then, you know, take your finger and touch it and see what it's like. Uh, I mean, if you have a meat thermometer, you could, you could do that as well, but, you know, touching your food, I mean, that's like the best way to do it. And then a knob of butter is just like, you know, a slice of butter. It's just a, that's what they call it, you know, in restaurants, it's a knob of butter. It's just like uh, a little piece of butter, put some butter on it and let it, and then tent it with, a, with some foil, let it sit for 10 minutes and then cut it on the bias. And you can only cut like, uh, you know, maybe like a half inch cuts. You, you, don't, want, you don't want like a, a chunk of meat like this. You want little, little pieces. And so cutting it on the bias means against the Cut, grain? Cutting it against the grain. So like if the steak, if, if the grain is running this way, you want to cut it this way. The grain is running this way. You don't want to cut it with the grain because it'll be really hard to chew. Uh, so you cut it at, on the bias, which means at an angle. And the best way, the bias would be um, like 11 and 4 o'clock is the best way I can describe bias. Not, not nine and three, because that's, hor that's horizontal. Uh, not, you know, 10 and, 10 and uh, what would that be, T 10 and four? It'd be 11 and five. Yeah, 11 and five would be like a great bias cut. So not quite noon and six, but right. just a little bit. Just a little bit off, yeah. yeah. 11 and five on the bias against the grain, and it, it should be perfect, so. Is everybody done with that recipe? Looks like everybody is ready to move on. Okay, rock and roll. Let me just put this down here. And um, this is a quick note. Now that we are working with uh, meat, I don't know if everybody knows this about food service, but we have four different kinds of cutting boards in food service. The red one, uh, you know, is for meat. Red, you know, red meat or protein, chicken, or actually no, it's red meat. That's all it is for, is for red meat. So if you were using a board, we're going to be using uh, more food. We need to either get a new board or you need to clean and sanitize your board right now. The other so boards- That's a really good, good way to remember not to cross contaminate. Yeah, kitchen. not to cross contaminate. And then, it's, and then uh, a green board that we use is for um, vegetables, um, yeah, vegetables. Then we have a white one, which is for fish and a yellow one, which is for poultry. Um, so now that we were uh, working with meat, uh, we should uh, wash our hands uh, just to be just to get clean. So, you know, everyone go to their soap machines. And another thing about um, washing hands and food service you, uh, you, you, you get soap on your hands, you wash your hands, and then you, uh, you dry your hands. You notice that the water's still running because then you turn it off with the paper towel because see, if I did that, I, I touched that with my hands dirty. So now I've re-dirty, I, I dirty them again. So you always wanna have clean hands. And uh, we're gonna use another knife because this one was, uh, you know, where you cut the meat. So we wanna get rid of that. 
So now we're going to go on to uh, what do we say? The uh, Mexican street corn. This is a great recipe. So what we need, let me get my ingredients out here. Did anybody have any problems finding the uh, tagine rest, uh, uh, seasoning? So when I made this with my girlfriends, we were in far north Wisconsin, and it was really hard to find something similar to the tahine seasoning. And uh, to be honest, I had never heard of it. I had asked, oh, okay. uh, what is this seasoning that we're supposed to buy? So anyway, we went to the store, I think it was a Kroger, and they didn't really have anything like it, okay. but they had some kind of like mexican chili salt and so that's uh, okay. what we used yeah yeah it's uh it's tagine it's, it's chili lime salt basically that's all it is it's not hot chili okay so what we're going to do here we're going to get our corn i already have uh shucked the corn and um what we're going to do is we're going to cut the corn off and I have a uh, really cool way to do this. Maybe some of you have done this already. Um, the reason why I said to get a bowl and then a small bowl that goes in it, because a lot of times people will take corn and they'll cut it like this and what happens? Because whew, it goes all over the place. And that's quite a mess. So you take the corn and you put it, you take the bowl, here's a small bowl and you put it in it like that. And then you put the corn on top of it like this. And what you're going to do is you just, now you got to be kind of careful here because you know, your fingers are exposed a little bit. So you just got to kind of be careful. If you want to, you could, um, you know, cut off the end. So you have more of a, a, a flat surface. And you just you cut your corn up and then it goes right into the bowl. So everyone should just cut your corn off. If, um, I don't know if you can buy other than frozen corn that's already off the cob. I don't know if you can do that, but you need fresh corn for this. You know, frozen corn, I mean, you could do that, but I don't, you're not gonna get the uh, freshness um, that you would from, from fresh corn. So we just need to cut all the corn off. Um, you know, I don't know if, if anybody's ever done this, but here's, here's a tip to what you can do with your corn uh, cobs after you cut the corn off. If you ever are making like um, a chowder, like a corn chowder or uh, any type of corn soup or anything, you, you uh, can put the corn cob in the soup as it's boiling and simmering uh, because it's gonna add a lot more corn flavor and it will, it will act as a little bit of a thickening agent because corn, you know, corn starch uh, will help thicken your soup a little bit. It'll add a lot of depth of flavor as well. So how's everybody cutting? Nobody cut a- Looks good. Now, when I made this in Wisconsin, we barely had a kitchen. It was, like I said, it was like one step up from camping. Um, and so we grilled the corn. We made the corn the same night that we grilled the beef and we grilled the corn and then we assembled the rest of the, um, the ingredients for the street corn. And it was, it was really good. The corn had a little that, bit of char on it. Worked out really well. That's see another, uh, you know, deviation from the recipe. You could do what you want. Yeah. Roasting the corn that like Amy said, you know, a great smoky flavor to it. It'll add a lot of color because the corn would be, you know, it's kind of browned and burnt a little bit definitely that's a great option we have our, our corn cut and if you're not going to do anything just discard it or if you have a composter you could compost it okay so now we have we've cut the corn off and we just want to quickly uh, par cook it. We just want to warm it up a little bit. Now, if you if, if you um, 
did it on the grill uh, like Amy did, you wouldn't need to do that because it's already been kind of softened up. So if everybody's done with their um, cutting it off, you can add the corn to your uh, uh, water, which I have kind of going over here already. We just want to add it in. Okay. Just let that cook for, what did we say, about 10 minutes, I said, yep. So they don't have the recipe at home. So we're doing 10 minutes oh. in the- Okay. Um, yeah. For about 10 minutes, we're only gonna cook for about 10 minutes. And uh, it's just uh, just water. There's no, we're not, we didn't salt it. We're not adding any flavor to it yet. Okay. So we have to, uh, let's see. Are there any questions? Because we just need this to, uh, to cook a little bit here, for about 10 minutes before we add the other ingredients. Anybody have any questions? Feel free to either write into the chat or raise your hand and I'd be happy to unmute you. Although Rob can't hear you. So we'll be playing telephone here. Or how about this? I'll ask you guys a question. Who has, has not come into the cafe and, and eat? And has anyone not? Oh, Aisha, you're here all the time. You should stop by. Everybody else is, is, has had something here. Well, I am here to tell you that their sweets are delicious. I eat lunch here at least twice a week. My favorite is the ginger molasses cookie. I think oh. it's so good. Okay. Well, in the meantime, you know, I, I, there's something we can do while this is cooking. Um, the recipe calls for jalapeno. So, you know, you can add it if you want. You don't have to add it. You could add another type of pepper if you want. Jalapenos aren't too hot. Uh, I'm actually going to wear a glove for this one because I, um, one time I, I, I touched my eye after cut, cutting a jalapeno. I thought my eye was gonna just burn out. It was so, so hot. So uh, I'm fortunate to have gloves here at the cafe. Um, I'm gonna use the same knife. It was just cutting the corn, no big deal. So uh, if everyone wants to grab the jalapeno, put it on the cutting board. Also, uh, all my vegetables and everything have been, I pre-washed them. Uh, I pre-wash everything that comes from the store. You know, they, they rinse them off, but I don't know what happens in between there and here. So I do wash all the vegetables uh, uh, off, particularly if they're not going to be cooked. So you take your jalapeno, you cut off the top, slice it in half. If you want, you can slice the half in half. And what we want to do is the jalapeno, the, the real heat in the jalapeno is the seeds and the, uh, the white part of, of the pepper. So we want to cut that stuff out. Now, you can cut this out. I go toward, toward my fingers. I mean, I don't know, I've, I've been doing it for a while. So I'm really kind of careful about it. You can do it away from you. You can go like halfway, spin it around, go the other way. You just want to get that part out. So someone wrote into the chat that they stop by the cafe when they can and they're loving the theme week. So what's our next theme week coming up in the cafe? Oh, uh, let's see. Put you on the spot here, Rob. The theme. Well. We are going to sell, you know, we have our signature chef series that we do once a month. Um, uh, this month for the month of July, it's going to be Alton Brown. Uh, it's going to be at the end of the month, July uh, 23rd, I think it is, to like 27th, 8th or so. Uh, menu to be determined. I don't know if anybody knows who Alton Brown is, but he's this kind of personality on, on uh, Food Network, and he's written a lot of books. He's kind of quirky. He's been like on, um, he's like a, um, oh, Iron Chef, he like does the moderation on Iron Chef when, when that goes on. Uh, so we're going to do Alton Brown in July and then August uh, at the end of the month, it's Rachel Ray. We're going to feature her because we feature one chef every month. Uh, they, they can be alive or they can be passed. 
and uh, we feature them during their birthday uh, birthday week, and we uh, recreate uh, some of their recipes. So we kind of have fun with that, and uh, it's been kind of successful. We've been doing that for a little over a year now. We're gonna be doing that. Uh, I tell you, uh, this coming week, uh, what's going to be on the menu this coming week? Uh, the soup is going to be a summer chicken and vegetable soup. Um, the quiche is going to be a summer vegetable, well, summer. So we're a lot of vegetables right now. Summer vegetable quiche, uh, yellow squash, red pepper, green onion. Um, okay, what else might be putting in there? Uh, the other quiche, uh, people have been asking for this, believe it or not, uh, salmon and dill quiche, which is, it's pretty good actually. And then later in the week, there's going to be a Greek quiche. So we're going to have a, we're going to have a combination of Greek and French, Greek, Greek quiche. It's going to be a uh, Kalamata olives and feta cheese. And then the um, salad this week is going to be artichoke and arugula with uh, sun-dried tomatoes. Uh, um, uh, what else am I putting in there? And there's gonna be a house-made Italian dressing and there's gonna be a couple of the vegetables in there as well. Sounds delicious. Yeah. I think we're gonna have a, a chocolate banana bread as well. So for your jalapeno, you want to uh, kind of make this uh, a very small cut, small dice. So I've cut like, this was a half of a pepper. I've cut the half into fourths. And you know, if you can work with one is good. If you work with two, if you work with all four, whatever. And so here's this, this cut. So you got your, your finger and your finger like this, your thumb and your, your index, your, your thumb behind your fingers. And you're gonna use your knuckles as the guide as you rock your knife back and forth. Your blade should never leave the board. You shouldn't be like, because you're gonna cut yourself. So you, by keeping your blade on your board, it's, it's just, it's, it's uh, anchoring it is what it's doing. So you just wanna cut this up a little bit. Now, you know, it all depends on how much pepper you want in there. So you got your two boards. I can smell my corn cooking. Is everybody, is everyone's corn kind of simmering? I see nodding. Okay. Aisha gives a thumbs so up. You, can, you can take it off because we don't want to cook it too hard, too long. So um, I did forget to say get a colander. So you just want to drain it. Just want to drain, drain the corn. Burners are off. Yeah. Okay. So now we have that. Now the problem with the jalapeno is you only use a little bit. So now you got a lot left. You could just put it in a bag, keep it in your fridge, add a little bit to your eggs in the morning, you know, spice it up a little bit. So now we are going to get another pan. Where's that pan? Have a pan, have a corn. We're going to put the corn into the, a bowl. Okay. Then we're going to start adding the other ingredients. So we have our mayonnaise and it's four tablespoons of mayonnaise. This is what I, I recommend starting off with. If you want less, use less. If you want more, use more. And I recommended using Hellman's. I'm, I love Hellman's. I grew up on Hellman's. Uh, I'm not a, uh, um, what is that other mayonnaise? Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip, which is not mayonnaise. It's not mayonnaise. Right. It's not mayonnaise. But if you, like, if you like that, you could use that. You could use whatever. So, but I think uh, this, we use Hellman's here at, at the cafe. I think it just adds... It's mayonnaise. So four, four uh, you know, heaping tablespoons of, of mayo, okay? Then we want to add some um, lime juice. Here's a tip for, for uh, squeezing limes or lemons. Uh, give it a roll first, because what you're gonna do, you're, you're getting it all soft and juicy already, so it's not as hard. So we're just gonna do two tablespoons of uh, lime juice. Now, if you um, have a, a lime uh, lemon squeezer, that's great. If you don't, I have another option for you. 
I'll show you. I'm still using the same knife because it's the same ingredients. It's no big deal. We're not gonna cross contaminate there. So if you don't have uh, a squeezer, you could, you know, we've kind of juiced it already. You see, it's very drippy. And I said two tablespoons. So I'm just gonna eye this up instead of like being back and forth. You can, you take a fork and you uh, just put it in there and you kind of grind it up and get it out like that. And that's nice and loose. So it comes out easy. If you have one of these, these are great. You put the uh, lime in or lemon. This is, this is the lemon, this is, or this is the lime, this is the lemon one. Put it upside down, squeeze it, and it comes out. Just like that. So we have our juice. Then we're going to add our jalapeno. I'm gonna put it all in. Make it a little spicy. Okay, then we have some uh, uh, fresh, fresh cilantro. It says a quarter cup of cilantro. Again, I've washed my cilantro. I'm just going to look at it. I'm just gonna take, I don't know, it's like a quarter cup to me. If you want more, you could add more. If you want less, you can add less. So we wanna give this up a little bit of a chop. And my recommendation is to, you know, kind of crumple it up. Be careful now. And you want to just you know, kind of chop it up a little bit. And if you if you rock the blade back and forth, you can take your fingers and put it on your knife, which kind of again anchors it. Is everybody doing? I see Good. lots of squeezing, chopping. I got a thumbs up. All right. Here's your cilantro. You know, it, this looks a little bit more than a quarter cup. But that's I like cilantro. You just add that in. Okay. So here's your tagine. And it is, uh, I said one teaspoon. One teaspoon of tagine. Put that in. And then we're going to add some, uh, we gotta do our, our cojito. Can't forget our cheese. Where did it go? I know I have, there it is. <laughs> Here's cojito. It's a Mexican artisanal cheese. Um, you can find it at any store. Uh, if you don't want to use this, you can use feta. It tastes really much, uh, pretty, basically the same. It's a hard cheese. It's kind of like uh, the Parmesan of, you know, Mexican kind of cheese a little bit. So you just want to, What did I say? Five ounces. This this whole brick is uh, eight ounces, so it's almost a whole brick or wedge. And what you want to do is you just you want to crumble it up. It's very crumbly. I think sometimes you can buy it pre-crumbled. You, you, yeah, you can. That's right. Yeah. Is there a benefit to buying it in a block like that? No. It's, it just looks cooler for yeah, TV. Yeah. <laughs> it's very important. It's just, yeah, you, you know, buying a crumble uh, will just save you some time to sprinkle it on. It'd probably be easier to uh, weigh out, portion out. So we did five, about five ounces. We saved a little bit for um, a garnish later. All right. So we have everything here. Is everybody up to this point? Looks like it. Okay. Got a thumbs up. I'm going to take my gloves off here. Okay, then we are going to, what do we say, Ortiz? So we're going we're gonna to mix it up. Now you can combine everything. We haven't added any salt and pepper yet. And as you mix it up, you'll feel the heat coming off the corn. And this is just going to like have the cheese kind of melt and the mayonnaise is going to get really melty with it. it. You know, again, 
Smells pretty good. Now the cojito is kind of salty. So uh, we're gonna taste it in a second to see what it tastes like. Uh, so you can stir it up. You know, you wanna give it a taste. I think I might use a little bit of salt. So, you know, just a little salt, a little bit of pepper. And I actually think it needs a little bit more lime juice. I like mine a little bit tangy. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. And if you think it, you need a little bit more, go right ahead. Go in there. And then you want to uh, put it in a nice bowl for service. Where did I put my bowls? Let's see. There we go. So you get a bowl, you put it in. You, you can serve this, you know, right away, uh, warm, or you can put it in the fridge. You know, you can, you can make it the day ahead of time if you wanted to and let the flavors come together, you know, give it a stir uh, before you serve it. And it tastes really great. So you have it in your bowl. And then what you want to do now is to um, garnish it a little bit. So you can just take a little bit more cilantro. Yeah, I'm a big fan of using all the cilantro, not just the leaves, but the uh, stems as well because it all has different uh, flavor. And then it also has a different texture for the, uh, for the stem. So you have that chopped up. You could just take a little bit of, put this on top, take a little bit more cheese. You crumble it up. Like that, if you wanted to, you you know, if you wanted to, you just sprinkle this on it, just like that, and then you have your Mexican street corn. Looks beautiful. I bet everybody else does too. Hard to tell. I see a lot of chopping of cilantro. How's everybody doing? Does your corn look as beautiful as Rob's? Ashley would like to know, do you serve the corn hot or cold? Uh, both, um, you know, you can serve it right away. Or, you know, if, if you're having a dinner party, you could make this like, since you're gonna do the steak tomorrow, you can um, put this in the fridge now and um, serve it cold tomorrow. I would, I would not recommend heating it back up. Um, I think that would just uh, deteriorate the quality of the corn. Um, but yeah, you both, either way, whatever you'd want. Uh, but like, if you guys are going to do this tomorrow night, just keep it in the fridge, stir it up, you know, um, you can stir it up. You could garnish it a little bit more, give it a taste. Flavors might come together overnight. Uh, but it'll, it'll, it's good either way. I mean, eating it warm, it would be like really traditional, you know, the way that you get it on the street, because it's like fresh corn that's dunked in like hot mayonnaise or, you know, it's mayonnaise and then uh, sprinkled with the tagine or some other Mexican sauce. And then you're eating it warm. So it's, 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 if you eat it warm, it'd be like, you're eating it off the street. So, so that's that one. It smells really good in here. I hope it smells as good at your homes too. So I know we're running a little bit late, but this last recipe is going to be really quick. So, um, Here's a quick tip on how you can save a cutting board without dirtying more. So my, this cutting board is a little bit dirty on top. So I'm going to just scrape it off. I'm not gonna use the knife, but it's the green one. So it's the vegetable one. So I'm just gonna flip it over because this one, this side's clean. I can just reuse that one and I'll get a new knife. Get rid of this stuff.
Okay, now we're on to our chimichurri. So for, for those of you who don't, uh, do not have a little Roboku or a little blender like this, you could, um, you could use a blender if you'd want. Um, you could chop the ingredients all you want. I mean, you have to really chop them down pretty finely because chimichurri needs to be, uh, all the ingredients need to be really, uh, really mixed together. Very, very uh, into a, like a smooth paste. So is everybody ready for chimichurri? I see a captive audience. Oh, really? Yes. Awesome. Okay. I'll get my ingredients. Here we go. So we have uh, parsley, right? Oh, here. I'll start at the top. Shallot. And then we have our uh, another pepper. This is a, a Fresno. And then we have uh, more, garlic. more garlic. A lot of garlic in, this recipe, in these recipes. Uh, we have a red wine, uh, cilantro, uh, flat leaf parsley, not curly parsley, flat leaf, please. Uh, oregano, okay. An olive oil, and salt and pepper. So another clean knife. I'll take out one of my favorite ones here. Uh, first, we, uh, we're just going to combine everything in here. It's super easy. We just have to do a little bit of cleaning up. You want to take your shallot. Split it in half. Take off the end. Uh, I'll show you a, a, um, a quick tip for those who weren't for the uh, chicken pot pie recipe. Um, we're, this only uh, needs a rough chop, but like say this was an onion or it's a, it's a shallot. If you want to get this into nice fine dices, you, uh, you cut it in half, you cut off one end only. You keep the other end as an anchor and you put your palm on top of the uh, shallot or onion and you cut through it, not all the way. And if you try to do, you can maybe do like two cuts. And then you do some slits down this way. And then you cut down. And then you have all your fine dice. This is really easy if you want everything to kind of look nice. So does everybody have one of these or anything that they can use as a blender? I see nodding. Awesome. So you can picture us girls bringing a food processor on our camping trip. Did you? Oh yeah. Nice. So this um, really says just a rough chop. So, you know, that'd be a rough chop. Doesn't have to be perfect because it's all gonna get mixed together. So we're gonna cut up the shallot. We're gonna put it in. Okay. They're chilly. Oh, I'm going to get my gloves again. Sorry. Hang on. Uh, a tip for anyone who is using peppers tonight, a good way to cleanse your hands is to either wash them with lemon juice. If you have some of the extra lime juice, do that. Rub them, rub it all over your hands. Uh, and then use soap and water and it should take a lot of the... Um, uh, capsin out of your, out of your fingers. So this one calls for a whole chili. So we're going to cut it in half and then the half in the halves so we can remove the seeds and the pith. So I'm working, uh, one end to the other. So I'll, you know, I'm teaching you guys some safety, not dragging the knife towards you like I was doing before, but. So you want to kind of get the seeds off. If you want to, you 
could run the peppers underwater to give them a rinse to make sure you get, get all the seeds off. And you just want to give it a, a, another rough chop. And you want to put it in. Again, if you don't want it hot, you don't have to add all of it. You don't have to add any of it. Um, again, it's just a, a preference of taste. Okay, do that, uh, your garlic, just like before, uh, particularly for this application, you wanna take off the hard end, just give it a, a cut off. Again, we said a rough chop for these, so you wanna maybe just give it a good smash, put the garlic clove under the blade, and hit it with the palm of your hand. And then, you know, just a rough chop. This is all gonna get blended together. That'd be fine, you put that in. And right, then we go back to our cilantro. We're saying we want a half a cup of cilantro. So you know, I'm gonna eye it up. That's like a good half cup. Want to give it a, um, just a rough chop, make it a little bit easier for the little processor to work. Pick it up, I'm gonna put it in. Stuff it in there. Okay, then we gotta use some uh, parsley, flat leaf parsley, it's a quarter cup. So I know how much I cut. I'm gonna do just half of what I did on that. Another kind of rough chop. Rob, if you're scaling this recipe, I've always heard that chimichurri is a one to two ratio of parsley to cilantro, yep. and then everything else is kind of to taste. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, the, true? it's it's uh, the it's the cilantro and parsley, and then the other one is oregano, is what we add to it. So yeah, it's it's uh, a half a cup of of cilantro for this uh, make about makes about two cups half a cup of cilantro and a quarter cup of, of the parsley. Yeah, so it's like two to one ratio on that. And then the, um, uh, I would recommend fresh oregano. I mean, you could use dried, but you know, fresh is really gonna taste a lot better. And you don't wanna just put the whole stem in this because this is really woody. So what you wanna do is you can take it and, and uh, you go against how the leaves are on and they, they just kind of come right off. And so we said uh, two tablespoons. So I would say that's about uh, four stalks. This is the same way you can clean uh, fresh thyme. Uh, you can just pull back going backwards on the, uh, on the stem and it comes off because this is, this is like a little twig. It's not going to get ground up. So there's your oregano. And then you wanna do a quarter cup of um, olive oil. So I'll weigh this out. We may, we may need to add more. We'll have to see, but this is what we'll start with. Quarter cup of olive oil. And uh, yeah, we'll quarter, uh, where's the top? And we want to do a little bit of salt. So one teaspoon. Turn it on. Just gotta keep pulsing it because it just takes a while. There's so much in there. You know, so you look at it, you know. Do you do red wine vinegar too in this one? Yeah, sorry. Thank you. That's why Amy's here to keep me in line. And oh, I just, remember. I remember the recipe. It was that yes. memorable. 
a half a cup of red wine because I was wondering, you know, it should be a little whippy around a little bit more. And then you get that nice color of the chimichurri filled yes. with the red wine vinegar. Now it'll blend a lot easier. There we go. So there we go. I'm going to taste it. Oh, it's so good. I use a little more salt. And, uh, you know, again, you could use more hot pepper, less hot pepper. You could add more garlic, less garlic, whatever you want. So then you want to move, put it in a nice uh, little bowl. This used to be my grandmother's little bowl. She used to serve sauces and stuff in it. And you can just. Now, if you want to make, you, you could make this ahead of time and let it sit in the fridge and let it like the, so the garlic will kind of mellow. Cause it's, I mean, it's really strong with four cloves, but uh, oh, I put a little bit too much in there, but there you have like a lot of chimichurri. So when you serve the meat, you know, you, you, you serve this with it and then people can spoon it on, on the meat themselves or they can have it on the side. This, this is also a great uh, extended marinade for red meat. You know, you could take the flank steak and uh, just marinate it in this, uh, which would be really, really good as well. Um, so that, that's the chimichurri. And it's, uh, it goes perfect with the steak. And that's about all we have uh, to cook tonight. Well, everything smells delicious. Do we have any questions from the audience other than what's already been dropped in the chat? I know we lost a few people, but I will be emailing out the recipes so that you have them on file. It's a good recipe to keep on file. It was so good. I, I hope that if you, if you do, um, you know, make it, send me your pictures. Um, I wish we could grill it um, together. Um, but if you do do it, I, last time we did a chicken pot pie, some people did send me uh, photographs of their pot pies after they were done. Uh, some people did stop in and, and show me the pictures and then tell me about their experience. And uh, they told me some things that were good about the, uh, the Zoom call and, you know, some things that might, could have enhanced it better for them. So it'd be great to get any feedback from you guys. Um, so, yeah, it'd be yeah, great. Send us your send us your pictures of your flank steak. You can send them to reference at GEPL.org. I just dropped that in the chat or you can send it to me. I'm going to send out the recipes. Um, we may even feature it on our social media. Yeah. And I want to thank Amy Franco the executive producer and my editor for doing this round of applause and for Joe Halter, uh, director of the IT department for the library coming in on a Saturday to do this as well. Well, and thank you so much, Rob. We love having you here at the cafe. It's so fun to cook with you. I wish I was cooking right now too. Um, but don't forget to send us your pictures, stop by the cafe, see what we're cooking and stop by the information desk to say hi to us too. All right. Bye everybody. Thanks everyone.